Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last time we put together the gearbox and the rear suspension arms. Today we're going to start at step 6, attaching the gearbox to the rear bit of the chassis. For screws we're going to be needing two M3x8s, two 12mm self-tappers, and two 10mm countersunk self-tappers. From the parts trees we only need a pair of D10s, the clamps for the optional anti-roll bar. Okay, the gearbox neatly fits into the chassis, front first, then the rear drops in with the bottom plate hinged down. Close up the plate. If it's a bit stiff and doesn't sit nicely, loosen up the two screws that attach it to the gearbox. Fit the two self-tappers in front of the gearbox, leaves them with a bit of a gap under the heads. Flip the assembly over and install the two countersunk screws. Do them up nice and snug. Now it's all nicely lined up, we can tighten up the two self-tappers too. And of course, if the screws holding the plate to the gearbox are still loose, tighten them up. Next, the anti-roll bar clamps. They've got two holes in, but it's easy to figure out which one to use. The side with the flat bottom gets the screws. The other side has ridges that help locate the anti-roll bar. They don't need to be tight, just enough that the clamps aren't going to rattle around. Okay, step seven, the pinion. We're going to need the motor, the pinion, the allen key, the fibre plate Tamiya always like to use, and the grub screw, which we'll loosely fit right away so we don't end up losing it. The motor has a little bit of rubber tube on the shaft. You can slice it along its length or pull it off with some pliers. Just bear in mind you're pulling the shaft through the armature, so if it's really stuck on there, just cut it free. On really old kits, that stuff seems to go almost like glue. Another widget Tamiya give you helps set the pinion position on the shaft. Very handy on a gearbox where you can't really see what you're doing. First the disc goes on, press it down all the way and line up the holes with the screw holes in the motor. Next opinion, teeth up, pop it on the shaft and nip up the grub screw so it's not going to fall off. Put the tool over the top with the slot lined up with the grub. Loosen it and slide the pinion so it's touching the top of the tool. Nip it up again, remove the tool, and tighten up the grub properly. It wants to be nice and tight. And there we go, one motor ready to install. Next, step eight. We'll need the two A7s. I suppose the best description would be body mount mounts. There's the two M3x25s and two M3x10s. First, the body mount mounts fit to the side of the gearbox. They've got little blocks on the end that locate them. So you just install one of the M3x10s on each side and they'll line themselves up. Motor next. Slot it in roughly the right position, getting the holes roughly lined up with the middle pair of holes on the gearbox. The middle pair being for the 16 tooth pinion you get in the kit. Pop in one of the M3x25s and lightly press it against the face of the motor. Jiggle it around, and if you are fairly close with the initial alignment, you should feel it drop in when it finds the hole. Do it up a bit so it's not going to fall out. Pop in the other screw and move the motor until it finds its hole too. With everything in, tighten up the two screws. Nice and tight. Steel screw threading into a steel motor. Step 9. For this, we'll need the main chassis. E2 and E3 three 10 mm self-tappers, or four if you don't want to use the antenna mount. The antenna mount itself, and the M3x12 grub. On the right side, E3 sits on the chassis and gets a screw in its two outer holes. On the left side, E2 goes in. If you're using the antenna mount, there's a self-tapper for the rear hole. For the front, we need to fit the grub screw. We want it to be roughly halfway in. The antenna mount screws onto the grub, to tighten it, the allen key at the base of the slot works a treat. If you're not going to use the mount, you just install two self-tappers just like the other side. Okay, step 10. We don't need many bits for this one, just four 15mm self-tappers and the two big bits of chassis. The rear chassis with the gearbox slips in perfectly under the main chassis. Everything lines up, everything drops in place. Nice. On the bottom, we need to install the four screws. They go in the outer holes, under the bits we installed in the last step. The holes are recessed for the screw heads so they don't stick out. Might have been nice if they were a nice flush fitting countersunk, but they will do quite nicely. And there we go. Even with just those four screws it feels rather robust. Once the shock tower goes in it will be attached on the top too. Nice. 
one more step for today so step 11 we need to open up bag B and while I do that you may have noticed the colors have gone a bit mm, funky I normally use a pair of pretty powerful filament bulbs to light things just after step 10 one of them blew I think it was the one that was flickering a few videos back the only replacement I have are these energy saving ones and even after setting the white balance the colors are not great anyway step 11 we need four of those closed rounded ball caps, two 23mm threaded shafts. Now these aren't turnbuckles, the threads both go the same direction. And we're going to need two brass ball ends. We only need one part from the tree, and that's E11. Making up the links is always a bit of a pain. We need to grab the centre with some pliers. Even better, some parallel jawed pliers. You can get a bit more force with them, and because they're parallel they don't tend to eject to the shaft fit a cup on each end and do them up a little bit at a time keeping them nice and even keep going until you've got a pair that match up with the diagram in the manual don't worry too much about scratching the surface with the pliers they're not damper shafts so it doesn't really matter you can go over the bare metal with a fine tip marker if you want to make it look like you know what you're doing last bit the two balls need to get fitted to the plastic mounts not much to go wrong here just make sure you get them in the right holes Okay, well, that's your lot. Next time we will be getting the rear suspension working and make a start on the front. So, thanks for watching, like if you liked, and if you're not already, by all means subscribe. Bye guys!